Hello, welcome to the first exchange tutorial. Um, in this session I'm going to show you how to do something that I recently was demonstrating at the NECC conference uh, in San Antonio. So we're going to be using Notebook 10 and the new object animation feature, the fade in and the fade out. And we're actually going to be showing how you can press an object here and it will make something else appear here. Um, so I hope you enjoy the tutorial and uh, let's get on with it. Okay, so uh, here's my activity page and what I want to do here is I want to press this icon down in my bottom right hand side and I want my answer, which is Reykjavik, to fade in um, or give the impression of it fading in and revealing the answer. I could use the fade in object animation and to do this I would select my object, I would choose my properties menu and I would go to object animation then I would change the type to fade in and make sure that it occurs when the object is clicked I can choose that here um, and then say repeat none but um, I'm not sure how well this shows up on the video there's a faint um, version of my object I can still see it and that's to make um, this for notebook to let you know that where the object is. So I actually decide to use the fade out object animation instead. So I'm just going to remove this object animation, select again and choose none. So what I'll do is I'm going to draw a rectangle on top of my object and I'm going to change the color to white because that's my background color. So I'm going to choose my fill effects, I'm going to choose white, and I'm going to choose my line style, and I'm going to choose white. Now, um, many people use this activity, um, this technique to just click on the box and actually move it out of the way. Now the problem with that technique is that um, if you have several of these on the page, you can't see where your box is. So this is why um, this solution works. So I'm going to select my uh, white box and I'm going to also select my corner icon. Now if you're on um, Windows you can do that by holding control, the control button when you press both objects and if you're on uh, Mac then you can hold down the command button when you press both objects and it will select them both. Now if I select my properties arrow and go to grouping and group these together um, it's going to group them together and depending on which layer the object was on it will put them on the same layer so in this case my corner icon was on the bottom layer so both my corner icon and my object disappeared to the back so I can just rectify that by clicking on my arrow again choosing order and bring to front now I've got one object that's covering my answer. I'm going to apply my fade out animation to this. And I'm going to go to my properties menu, choose object animation, choose fade out, make sure it's when the object is clicked, um, make sure that it repeats no times, and I can change my speed here and make it faster if I wish. Okay, so that's the first part of the activity done. If I click on this icon now, it's going to fade out the, the answer. The problem is, is my icon then disappears. Um, now that might be fine, um, but I might want it to stay there um, for my own reference. So I'm going to undo that and I'm going to bring this back to its original transparency. Now what I'm going to do this time, I'm going to ungroup these and this time I'm going to make a copy of this corner icon. I'm going to clone it. Now, I'm going to take this copy and I'm going to use my active alignment, which is found in the format alignment menu. And here I make sure that snap objects to guides and show guides for active objects is set. And I'm going to align my copy of my icon on top of the one that's originally there. Now I'm going to group this new icon with my um, masking object. So back to my menu, group them together 
and I'm going to apply my fade out object animation to this new uh, version. Uh, make sure it's when the object's clicked. Okay, excellent. Now when I press my icon, it fades out, but because there's another icon exactly the same underneath it, um, it continues to, to look like it never disappeared, and it gives the impression that it's just uh, that that's disappearing. Now there's one, uh, one last problem with this example. Um, if I go back to my uh, original page, um, if I click on the icon, my answer will appear, but if I also click up here on my answer, that will also make it fade in. So I can solve this by putting a, um, a mask on top of this one. So I'm going to go to my shape tool again, go to my square, and I'm just going to draw uh, a bigger mask on top, and this is on the topmost layer. And I'm going to change the line style um, and the fill style, and I'll just change it to a slightly um, off blue so I can I can see it. And now if I bring this object transparency down to nothing and I lock it in place, now when I go back to my page, if I select up here, I'm actually selecting the locked object and I'm not selecting the answer. So there's no way I could accidentally draw ink over here or accidentally select this on the page and it wouldn't reveal my answer until I'm ready to press this and this will then reveal my answer. Okay, so that's how easy it is to use the object animation to make things appear in different places when you click them. Um, come back in about two weeks to see another tutorial and uh, good luck with your notebook development.